Well, in the midst of the U.S. Women's Open last week, the LPGA Tour released a new dress code policy for players. Here's a list of the articles of clothing that will no longer be allowed. Plunging necklines, skirts, skorts, or shorts that do not sufficiently cover a player's, quote, bottom area, racerback tops without a mock or regular collar, joggers, and leggings, unless they are worn under a skort or shorts. Well, as you can imagine, reaction was swift and various media outlets have had a field day with the announcement, calling it sexist, discriminatory, and body shaming. One of the policy's most vocal critics has been Instagram star and professional golfer Paige Sporanic, who wrote a lengthy op-ed for Fortune magazine entitled, The progression of women's golf is plunging further than our necklines. If professionalism in golf equals athleticism, she wrote, then athleticism should be promoted and showcased, and that means allowing the clothes that promote it. Well, joining us now to discuss this highly contentious issue is Golf.com's Marika Washchishin. Now, Marika, this has obviously touched a nerve. Now, call me old-fashioned, but I don't really see any issues with, with these new guidelines. To me, they, they seem like they make sense. I think that the whole point is that these aren't new guidelines. They're actually existing guidelines under the LPGA dress code. This is just an enforcement and a reminder for the players that, hey, athletic wear is not allowed. It never has been. So we're, we're sort of tightening on that and saying some of the players have been playing a little bit fast and loose with the yoga pants and the racer back. So this is just a gentle reminder that it's not allowed. So let's cut it out a little bit. Marika, is there a little bit of division on the LPGA Tour? Uh, Stacey Lewis, Christina Kim have been pretty outspoken in support of these new rules. Uh, they're veterans on tour, I would say. Seems like some of the younger women on the LPGA Tour have been a little more outspoken against these type of uh, regulations. Is there a little bit of divisiveness between the generations on the LPGA Tour? I think so, and I'm not even sure it's a generational thing. I think it's, um, I think it ends up being a sponsor thing. I think it ends up being a comfort thing. I think there are some women who are very used to a traditional uh, gear that they wear on tour, whether it be Bermuda shorts and, and polos. Uh, some women are more used to the more athletic flippy skirts. So I think there is a divide, and I think what you're hearing on tour is, does it really matter? You know, if we're both talking on either side of this, like, is it really that big of a deal? Shouldn't we be focusing on the golf and not the discussion around what we're wearing? Well, Paige Sporanic's point was, look, a plunging neckline on one player is going to be and look mm. different than it will on another player. Hence the, the inherent, what she feels, discrimination aspect. Marika, what is a plunging neckline and, and what does it mean to fully cover your bottom when it comes to these new LPGA guidelines? Because it is admittedly a little bit vague. Yeah, I think that is a hard question to answer because if you look at the LPGA Tour, you're not really seeing that. I have not seen LPGA players with plunging necklines and exposed bottoms. Um, I think what you're seeing this in is things like casual golfers putting videos on Instagram and you're seeing people react in that way. And, you know, decency is something that is very heralded in golf. It's a traditionalist game. You want to look modest and professional. The women want to be taken seriously. So I guess you're sort of saying, don't show yourself off too much, but also you're an athlete. So you want to look like an athlete. But to be 100% honest, I haven't seen any of these really offensive plunging necklines or uncovered bottoms. And I think that most tour players agree in that. And that's why they're saying, what's the big deal? You mentioned the videos on Instagram and casual golfers wearing certain types of attire. But I, I, I guess what's fun about golf is we get to wear a lot of what the pros wear, whether it's LPGA or PGA Tour. That, that gear is available to us from all these, these great manufacturers. Um, does the LPGA Tour have to be careful here and not alienate certain people, um, especially when they're is making a conscious effort? We're trying to grow the game, trying to get younger, get younger people involved in the game. Fashion is a big part of golf, whatever tour we're talking about here. And to start scaling back and getting more conservative, I think you're going to push certain people away. What do you think? Sure. And I think the important distinction to remember is that the LPGA, this is not something that is a top-down order. This is something that the players have been giving as feedback to their player presidents. This is something the players want. The players want to be taken seriously and to have, you know, a reasonable dress code, nothing that's, you know, going to be body shaming anyone because I don't think that's where the LPGA is going. 
the LPGA is very good at promoting their tour and advancing the game for young girls. And I don't think that this is really going to hurt them. I think that this has been a little bit overblown by the media because they're missing some nuances uh, about the fact that it was an existing guideline, that the players did want this. Um, and I'm glad you brought up the PGA Tour because when Ricky Fowler wears his joggers and high tops and flat brims, yeah, there are some older golf fans who are maybe not so thrilled, but we're not having discussions about it in the middle of the U.S. Women's Open, you know? <laughs> and so I think that there's an unfortunate double standard here. So I think the sooner that we can get over the fact that, okay, yoga pants, bad, racerbacks with no collar, bad, everything else that's sort of athletic looking good, then we can move on and focus on the women's golf.